The air feels sticky in the summertime when you visit. You can hear the warbler song mixed with the hum of passing trains and the roar of cars. This is Bayou Sauvage. Although I'm sure it's been called many names by the native peoples who lived and passed through it, names which for now remain lost. On Dixon, uh, Deputy Project Leaders, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, Southeast Louisiana Refuges, mm -hmm. uh, Lacombe, Louisiana. And we're here at Bayou Sauvage Urban National Wildlife Refuge in uh, beautiful Orleans Parish, Louisiana. More specifically, New Orleans. <laughs> A 30-minute drive from the French Quarter off the I-10 interstate hides a nearly 30,000-acre refuge full of diverse marshland. Not far away are Lake Pontchartrain and Lake Bourne. It holds a hardwood forest, freshwater, brackish and estuarine tidal marsh, lagoons, canals, and natural bayous. And so sometimes people will come here and they say, well, we want to go see the wild side of New Orleans. So if they <laughs> ask me a, a question like that, I would bring them to Bayou Sauvage, whereas most people will come down here and they'll see some of the wildlife. They're speaking maybe somewhere like Bourbon Street, Canal, Frenchman, so, somewhere down in the quarter. But you can have uh, some really good wild fun and adventure here on Bayou Sauvage, Urban National Wildlife Refuge, without going downtown on the streets and the high-rise buildings and everything. You can see an abundance of wild activity. When I first walked along these elevated boardwalks, I took in the nature and creatures around me. I imagined living in the swamp, fishing by day and being eaten by mosquitoes at night, watching the cattails and their high grasses flutter in the wind. I imagine painting here. Bayou Sauvage is a sanctuary for 340 species of birds. Many find a temporary home here while resting from their migration across the Gulf of Mexico during spring. You can hear the white pelicans, ducks, and their cacophony of friends coo and cluck. Northern American monarch butterflies pass through in winter. Okay. Sound like the clean. Okay. All right, bye. Look at this sight. Yeah, that's perfect. What kind of birds are those? These are mostly uh, egrets. Egrets. Well, we have a lot of a lot of wading birds, we, we put them in categories. So these would be wading birds, uh, but mostly egrets and uh, herons. Uh, some anningas and cormorants. Neotropic cormorants. While researching Bayou Sauvage, I learned that the history of this place is long and deep, with various native tribes such as the Chifunct, Chapatulis, and later the Choctaw once using and managing the ecosystem. Archaeological evidence reveals it was a place of painted pottery, a fishing and shell processing center, and a mass burial ground. Once French settlers arrived, tribes migrated west, and it is likely they traveled through Bayou Sauvage because of its location as a passageway between Lake Borg and Lake Pontchartrain. Going into the 1800s, Bayou Sauvage itself was a main route to and from the Gulf of Mexico into the city of New Orleans. So the historical significance of Bayou Sauvage itself, the actual bayou, is very important for trade and commerce. It also became the refuge of the St. Malo Maroon colonies, 
a community of Africans and Native Americans escaping slavery. It was almost the site for a massive redevelopment plan through the New Orleans East Incorporated, whose namesake eventually led to the area being called New Orleans East. And it was only after its failed development that the land was established as a wildlife refuge in 1990. Obiso Lodge was established back in April 1990 for the purpose of enhancing migratory waterfowl habitat, uh, providing environmental education in an urban setting, uh, fulfilling international treaty obligations with respect to migratory birds, and protecting wetlands in and around New Orleans. So that's the ecological significance of Biosauvage. It's some of the last remaining undeveloped land around Lake Pontchartrain. This land is now only an echo of what it used to be, a domesticated version of the pre-colonial era where cypress trees or hachiniha, seminoli for everlasting, were as wide as 10 men and light filtered through their russet canopies extending 100 feet above our heads. Live oaks with thick arms dipped down to the ground. The last of these, if not already cut down and harvested by colonizers and loggers, were wiped out from the saltwater intrusion of Hurricane Katrina. These trees were part of a flourishing ecosystem with thousands more species of mammals, amphibians, and birds in the height of its environment. Now it is under management by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, for which the deputy project manager, Pond Dixon, brought us on a boat and spoke to us. Our desire is to reduce the number of tallow trees in China Berry, and then return it more to a more of a native species mix of trees. For example, you have these uh, nice live oaks and stuff that's coming back in. What we call regen. So we do have some uh, very young oak trees and some very young cypress trees coming in from seeds that have been dropped by mm -hmm. the larger trees. So we have that going on here. Yeah, and how does the levee system affect Bayou Sauvage? Well, what the levee system does with the refuge is it, it, it basically divides it into fresh and saltwater habitats. And of course the freshwater side of the of the refuge is has more species diversity. Uh, it's easier to manage the stuff within the levee. But there's also some good uh, species diversity out in the salt marshes. Set within the New Orleans flood protection system, levees interrupt natural water flow patterns. U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service operates a system of pumps and flap gates to maintain its necessary balance of fresh water. But every hurricane season is a threat to fresh water balance when storm surges bring salty flood water that can remain trapped within the levee system and must be pumped out. In addition, the wetland provides some protection from hurricanes and storms by reducing damage from wind speeds for New Orleans East residents. Visitors can enjoy fishing, crabbing, kayaking, educational programs, service learning, and volunteer reforestation efforts. It's a, it's a paradise for someone that's really into bird watching and uh, wildlife photography or just coming out here and walking uh, to see the wildlife, hiking, uh, 
wildlife observation is a big thing within this organization. So we are really promoting Bayou Sauvage for those people that enjoy just old fashioned, what we call non-consumptive use. Mm. Coming out here watching the birds, taking pictures of the birds, uh, looking at the snakes. Uh, people love to come here and see alligators and we have hundreds of them here. So that's, uh, that's what you can do and see here at Bayou Sauvage Urban National Wildlife Refuge. Bayou Sauvage has long been a refuge. Refuge means shelter or protection from danger, a place providing assistance in distress. For humans, refuge can mean fleeing from war, violence, pursuit, or even unhappiness. For Maroon communities, this means fleeing from the violence of slavery. Now related to modern conservation, it means wildlife protection. The public land of Bayou Sauvage has been designated as a refuge by the United States government for the protection, conservation, and restoration of all the species of wildlife for the benefit of present and future generations. Feel free to flee here if you need to. I know I'll be coming back. Once again, uh, Bayou Sauvage is a great destination to bring your, your family, uh, bring your friends, bring your loved ones, uh, bring your grandparents, your godparents, bring whoever. I mean, we welcome everyone with open arms here at Bogosol Lodge Urban National Wildlife Refuge.